Okay, hi, we're back today. So, I'd like to cover a couple of things today. One is uh, the if statements in C++. So here I just have a template program here. Uh, let us create uh, an integer. And um, the other thing I wanted to mention, I want to just kind of reiterate, right? Here is a variable declaration. Okay, then, so as I said, here we are just declaring a variable. This has no initialization. We can initialize it like this later, or I could do both of them, as I said in previous videos. I could say int y equals like that. And the other way, of course, is I could do int z and give that an initial value like that okay now there is another way and this is a c this is a c++ 11 standard so um, it's not going to work on really old compilers but c++ 11 is m more than a decade old now so most uh, well I should say all c++ compilers should support this now and that is using the auto keyword. So this only works if you uh, declare and initialize on the same line. So I could say auto a equals 8. Now what this does is it infers that a is an int. Okay, so it, it, it looks at what it's being assigned to, and the 8 in this case is an integer, and so that works. It be, A becomes an integer in that case. I can also say auto B equals 3.14. In this case, uh, B is going to be a double. Okay, and uh, I believe I can also do it like this too, auto C, and I could say something like this, and I could say, uh, in which case, uh, C would be a hello, and um, also, I could also do auto uh, D in this case, and I could set it equal to, let's say, uh, not a string, but a character, right? and a character is denoted by single quotes. So if I did this, uh, let's see if this is going to work. So yeah, so this does work if I compile this, uh, it compiles successfully, and when I run it, uh, it works out, it prints out everything as it should be. Notice though that Unlike Python, C++ doesn't have a default new line character at the end of a C out. Uh, we would have to add that ourselves, or if you wanted any type of new lines after these um, variables, you would have to insert those manually. Now, once again, I want to reiterate that the auto feature is a C++ 11 um, is it's in the C++11 standard, right? So data types are being inferred here. Um, but we still haven't gotten to what I really want to show you today, and that is the if ladder. So how do you do an if ladder? Well, it's very similar to Python. Um, however, in just like Python, the if statement is going to, uh, so this is something perhaps maybe I haven't dealt with yet, but the bool data type, the bool data type, um, and let me use a different variable. Unlike, unlike um, Python where we, you can redefine a variable, in this case, we shouldn't do that. So for bool here, let's make e true. Notice that the difference between Python and C++ is that a true here 
does not, I repeat, does not have a capital T. That's also the case for uh, false. False is also all lowercase. So bool, if you wanted to make it false, it's like that. Okay? Now, what that means here is that the, now, you, you, you know, I could say um, if E, and which would be like saying if true. However, um, I recommend that you always use brackets uh, for if because unlike um, Python, they're required here for an if statement. Okay. So notice here I have brackets around uh, the A is less than 9. Now, remember, in Python, this is OK, but not C++. This isn't going to compile. If I try to compile it, it says, nope, there's something wrong with this. Now, so you do need, so brackets are mandatory here. But notice, there's no semicolon at the end. Also notice that I haven't placed the, now th this is one style of coding in. So this is correct, OK, like if I compile it, no problems. It works just fine. Now, I'm just printing garbage here just to, just to do something in the if statement. But more importantly, um, I don't program like, th I don't code like this. And I'll tell you why. It's because I like to differentiate between blocks of code and functions. So if you'll notice, if I go back up to int main, notice my bracket for my, my curly brace for my main function is on the same line as the function. However, I've done the same thing here for my if block. And I prefer not to, to do this for things that are not functions. So for an if statement, this is the way I'll have my braces. Now, you may notice that in textbooks, or in, in general, if you look at code, sometimes they will omit the, um, the brackets altogether. Will this work? Let's try it. Well, if it compiles successfully, and if I run it, it runs successfully as well. The EN printed out at the end. So do you need the braces? The answer is you do if the if statement has more than one line. So watch this. I could actually put the, I could actually put the um, C out on the same line as the if statement. And it would still compile properly, and it would still run properly. Now, this, this is bad looking code, so I would not recommend this. But essentially, doing this do, is no different, because white space, C++ kind of ignores it. It's not part of the language. Now, do programmers do this? They do, unfortunately, um, because once again, the if statement only contains one line. As soon as you do this, now this, this is not part of, you know, if I just put something in here, it doesn't matter what it is. As soon as I do that, that now is incorrect. Okay? The, um, those two lines are not part of the if statement, are not part of the if block. In order to have them as part of the if block, you need to explicitly have the curly braces, which means that I'm going to recommend that you always use the curly braces to define an if block, even if you only have one line. Okay. Now, uh, what about the next part? I mean, this is an if an if ladder can have more than just if. What's the next thing that you could have? Well, you could have else. Okay. And with an else, once again, you could say you could do this, and then you could have your line of code in here, and this is how it this is how it breaks down. Okay, so we could say here, um, a is not less than nine. Okay, remember. Uh, single quotes and double quotes are not interchangeable. Once again, double quotes are for strings. Single quotes are for characters only. So uh, if I compile this, it, 
compiles fine and I run it, it runs fine. Okay, so I got Eno at the end, and obviously if I changed A to be 81, and I compiled it, and I ran it, then uh, A is not less than 9 gets printed. Okay? Okay, so um, what about ELIF in Python? Well, the way you do that in C++ is you go el oops, else if, and now you have your else if statement. Uh, you could say something like, uh, I don't know, D is equal to, oops, A, let's say for example. And of course that's going to be true because if you look at line 13. And it's, you know, it's easy to try and put a full colon here, but resist the temptation. And now, of course, we're simply going to put our braces in. And just like Python, you can have as many else if uh, let me just finish this. Okay. You can have as many else if uh, branches as you want. You can only have one else branch, just like Python, and it should come at the end, just like Python. And um, obviously, the if ladder starts with if. Okay, so let's compile this and let's run it. And uh, there you go. So in this case, I think A was 81. So we, it printed uh, D is A. And it skipped the else. Exactly as same as you would expect. But that's basically an example of an if ladder in C++. And once again, you can have as many else ifs as you like. OK? But only one else, and it's the else is not mandatory, uh, again, but it, it should come at the end as a um, situation that catches uh, cases that were not tested for. Okay? Okay, so before we get into m more of C++, I wanted to show you this, the simple, because, because your background is coming from Python and you already know how to program, I wanted to show you uh, how to create an, a, a simple array. So what is an array? Uh, an array is basically like a Python list, but it's not smart. And it's not, you can't grow it, and it doesn't have methods that you can call on it, like append or, uh, you know, calculating the length of it and things like that. Uh, and it's static. That's the most important thing. So once you, once you create it, its size is set. That's very unlike a Python list that, where you can keep appending things to it. Now there is another data structure which we'll learn later in the course, which is called vector, which behaves very similarly to a uh, Python list. However, uh, it's important that you understand what a, an array is now at this point because it's a data type that is closely tied to strings in C. So now remember this course is C slash C++. So I'm kind of also, I'm not just teaching you C++, but I'm also teaching you C. And so essentially now what I'm embarking on is showing you the string data type of C, which is called a character array. So first of all, what's an array? Well, let me show you again how to create a regular uh, integer, right? I could do something like this, right? That's, that creates one integer. but you know, or, or, or this, that creates one integer. But if I wanted to create a container that what's called, I'm calling it container, but the real name for it is array, that can hold more than one, 
then I use square brackets, and then I have to specify how many I would like this container to hold. And that is, that is, you have to specify that on the line that you're declaring it. So for example, here, I'll say four. So when, I, when I've done this, that four is not an initial value. What I've done here is I've said that x is the name of the array, but it can contain four integers. And I will do that by showing you, I'll say x0, and by the way, obviously, we start at 0. So the indices of x would be 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay? And I'll say x0 is equal to, um, you know, how about 6? And I could say x1 uh, is equal to 7. OK? And I could say x2 is equal to uh, 8, for example. All right? Now, I'm going to print them out. Now, do you notice I purposefully kind of left off the last one, which was uh, 3? And that, that would be the biggest index that I could use, or that I perhaps should use. There's a special meaning behind that word. Um, but now if I print them out, okay, you can type along with me here. And now let's uh, let's finish this off now. Let's let's compile it, and it compiled successfully. And I'll run it. And you notice it prints out six, seven, eight. Which is, which is what I would expect, OK? Now, I can change this, by the way. And what I'm going to do here is I'll change this. Now, this is an integer array. Okay, These are integers that are being stored. But if I wanted to change this into a character array, look what I would do. I'll say, one thing I should just mention here before I change this into a character array. Anybody curious what would happen if I printed out x3? Notice I haven't initialized x3 yet, right? What is it? Let's find out. F9. Now, uh, oh look, we got a warning. Notice it said warning x3 may be used uninitialized in this form. So we did get a warning saying that we're using x3, we're accessing it, but we never initialized it. Let's see what happens if I run it. I love it. This worked out so beautifully. I'm so glad this happened. So no, here we go. Ready? 678. Do you guys see the 678? What is that? 22,027? It is an integer, but guess what? Here's the crazy part about this. It's that when we set when we when we ran line number six, okay, see so see line number six where it says x4? What we've done there is we've we've allocated a memory a, a contiguous, you know what contiguous means? It's like a, a, a chunk of memory that is big enough to hold four integers, OK? And that chunk of memory is in one piece, contiguous. Now, we put values into the first three parts of that memory, six, seven, eight. But the last part, we never initialized. And guess what? Fortunately, and I say fortunately, because I'd, I had no clue what this was going to be, but fortunately, that piece of memory was previously used by another program, and that was the value that was in it previously. So this is, this is not a good idea to do. You should always initialize your variables before accessing them. Because in C++, you don't know, if you do not 
initialize, if you declare a variable but do not initialize it, you're not guaranteed of what's going to be in that uh, memory location. It could be something left over from another program where the operating system freed the memory and then allocated it to you. And now you inherit that garbage data. Okay? So this is a fantastic example. I'm really glad this happened. Now here's another question. Um, if I run it again, will it give me the same result? Let's try it. Is that the same result? No. no, it's not the same number, is it? 21870 is not the same as it was before. Let, let's try, let's try, just keep that number in your head, 21870. Let's try running it again. It seems to be different. So this is fantastic. So every time we run this program, it seems like it's allocating a different piece of memory and it's, and it's, uh, it's giving it to us and we're getting different garbage data out. Now obviously we can fix this, right, by going like this. I can say x3 equals 9. And now if I compile this and I run it, now I get 6789. Six, Perfect. OK, that's great. Um, but now the question arises is, hey, does anybody, anybody think nefariously here? What would happen if I did this? Am I, see, here's the difference, OK? There's a saying. In C and in C and C plus uh, plus, you can not just shoot yourself in the foot, but you can blow your leg off. Uh, basically, let's see if this will even compile. Ready? Do we get any errors? No. No, not even a warning. Look at this. Not even a warning. Let's run it. So, <laughs> I love it. So six, we got the 6789, but after that, we get some negative number, and boy, oh boy. So this is actually kind of dangerous, because what I'm doing now is I'm accessing memory that I'm not allowed to access. Uh, because I've only asked to allocate enough memory for four integers, which would be 0 to 3. But I never said that. So like, watch this. If I, now listen, what am I doing here? Is this a, am I changing this memory location by printing it out? No, I'm not. Am I allowed to change it? Can I, can I actually modify a piece of memory that I never allocated? Let's try it. Let's make it 10. Uh, now, unfortunately, that's a two digit, but that's okay. It's still an integer. Let's see if it works. Ready? F9. It, it compiled successfully. Let's try running it now. And it worked. Wonderful. Six, seven, eight, nine, and then there's my 10. This is horrible. This is horrible. And the reason why it's horrible is because I'm not a, I should not be allowed to, I mean, we could keep going here, right? I should not be allowed to, uh, let's, let's just change these so that I can like maybe, here, let's go 4, 5, uh, 6, 7, 8, and then let's go 9 here. Okay, so, and then let's, let's do this one too. Okay, ready? Compiles and wait, runs six seven four five six seven eight nine. This is this is really bad, and why is it bad? It's because not only am I accessing stuff that I never allocated, but I'm also modifying it. Okay, so this is actually the way that some viruses are written, or I should say malicious code because what I'm doing is I'm actually modifying elements of memory that I'm not allowed to. Will this work all the time? Listen to me closely. 
Ready? Let me draw you a picture. Okay? And the answer, let me answer this very clearly. Will this work all the time? No. It will not work all the time. This happens to be working at this point, but you're never guaranteed this is going to work. Why not? Let me, let me show you, okay? So what's happening here? Why did, that, why did that work? Well, what's happening is when we say x, you know, 4, what we're doing is we're allocating a chunk of memory that can have 1, 2, uh, 3, 4. And obviously these indexes are 0, 1, 2, 3. And we've allocated these, and these boxes can all hold integers. This is like a piece in, this is like, this is like the memory of the, of the computer. The thing is, is that the question is, what, what comes here? And, and the answer is, is that the reason why this worked successfully, so if you look at this and when I run it, F5, um, it's actually able to go up to 9. And, and even though I didn't allocate that space, it, it should only, I, should, I should not be able to do 8 and 9. But the reason it's working is because what comes after this, so like here is the, the next one and the next one, this memory has not been allocated by another program. If it was, I would get segmentation fault. Because basically it's a way of saying your program is trying to access another program's memory. So the, the operating system is the memory, is the memory manager. Th at this point, the operating system has allocated this memory to my program. It has not allocated this memory to my program, even though I'm still accessing it. But what could happen is that this memory that's in question here might have been previously allocated by the operating system to another process working. Let's say Firefox or some other program that's running might have rights to this memory location. In which case, when I try to do line number 11, I would get, my program would crash. It would say, you're not allowed to do that. You can't access another program's memory. But in this case, when I run it and it works, all, it's, all it means is that, that this memory here is not currently being utilized by another program. Does that seem clear? But guess what? It could, the operating system could decide in the future that this memory here, it's going to give it to some other program, and guess what? Then my program would crash because I'm not allowed to access this area. So do you notice how there's really no checking for going out of bounds in this situation? This is a really bad thing, and you have to be very careful about it. Like I said, this is how malicious code is created. So imagine if you knew that the memory right afterwards contains something sensitive, then you could try and grab it, right? And have access to it. Now the question obviously is, not the hard part about this is, how do you, how would you make your program allocate memory next to something that is important? Well, that is very hard to do, but obviously it's not impossible. Uh, but that's beyond the scope of this course. However, going back to our code, I'd like to kind of give you the example of what happens if this is a character array. So here is an example of we've changed x now from an integer to a character array. And now we've put the characters a, b, c into the array. This last character here is called the null, it's a null character, and it's called uh, null terminating, so null termination, terminated string, or C string. This is called a C string. This is not a C++ string, okay? A C++ string would be done like this, string S, and we could set it to 
A, B, C. That is an example of, and, and, and you know, like I could just go C out S, and that would work too if I went F9, if, if I, there we go, A, B, C, A, B, C. So, but the question now is, there must be a better way of assigning the letters to a character array other than one at a time. Come on, that seems pretty stupid, right? Well, guess what there is? The other way of copying, or I should say, assigning characters to a, uh, to a character array is by, notice when I type this in, it tells me, where is the destination? I want it to go to X. And what is the thing I want to put in there? Uh, I want to put in there ABC. And so now if I do that, okay, if I compile this and I run it, it works. Let me just, let me, let me um, comment this guy out and this guy out. And we're just working with C strings here. Um, oops, what happened? Uh, what's the error I'm getting here? Compilation failed. Whoops. Okay, so I forgot to include C string. Uh, so if we include C string, now this uh, str copy will work. And when I do that, uh, it c does compile. And when I run it, it prints out ABC as expected. So notice C string, uh, or I should say str cpy, which is string copy, does what this did. However, this is still not a good idea because notice now I can go like this and if I run it, it does give me the warning and but it does say compilation finished successfully but now it says stack smashing which essentially means that uh, I'm doing something I'm not supposed to be because I've put in more than uh, for characters. There is a way to prevent this, okay? And that way is to use str n copy, where the n set also requires a third argument, which now I could type in uh, 4 minus 1. Now, why 4 minus 1? Because I can only have a maximum of 4, and I should leave space for the null character. So I can only have three letters. So if I run this, in, and I, it works perfectly. Now, how would you know the four? Well, usually the way to do this is like this. Size of x, and now if I go f9, and I go f5, it works. So this way, I'm, I'm gonna be careful not to put in anything more than I'm allowed because now if I make this super big I don't care because it's only gonna put in three characters ready watch ABC and that's the way to prevent that okay guys okay so here is our example of converting data types and you know in Python previously we've had a really easy time of doing this you just put you know if you want to change a string to an int you just put int in front of it um, let's see how to do that here. Here's a little bit of C++ code, an example of you know how to change data types. Uh, sorry, not change data types, but to, to declare and initialize data. Here we're. This is now C++ code with C out. This is C code creating a character array that's 256 characters or bytes long, and we're using string copy again. And as I said before, uh, 256 minus 1 in this case is to allow the null byte to be copied. But of course, the string we're copying is much less than 256 characters. So there is no issue, but we still have to provide the third argument. Uh, printf again is C. In this case, C out is C++ examples of how to print. And so here is where we get the information, right? Get line. And um, we're, we are um, 
using cin.getLine here. This is using the old character style array of getLine. This is the new C++ way of doing it. However, here is the example of how to convert the strings. So here, we've created a string called 14. Okay. Now we're going to convert it to an integer using atoy. Okay. Atoy stands for alpha to integer. But in order to change this, the alpha first has to be converted from a C++ string. This is a C++ string. Okay? You can only do str you, you can only create string data types in C++. But atoy that is a uh, C function. So we have to convert the input parameter from a C++ string into a C string. And that is done with the uh, method C underscore string. So s dot C underscore str will convert the C++ string into a C character array string. Okay? And then, once it's converted into an integer, we can then do arithmetic with it by adding 1. And so that should give us 15. Okay? Um, now, if you're using, if you're using C++11, there is a new way of doing this, okay? And of course, we are using C++11. But the new way of doing this is using S to I, or string to integer, in which case you don't need. So th this is the old C way of doing it. This is the new C++ way of doing it, OK? Notice that in this case, we can leave age alone as a, as a regular C++ string. We don't need to convert it into a C string. OK? And of course, what is the opposite of this, right? Uh, you know, like to me, honestly, this looks m more verbose. It's, it's, to me, if I had a choice, I would definitely use this one. OK? And there's no reason not to. C++11 now is standard on all the compilers, so uh, after all, we're basically a decade past C++11 at this point. So um, now, how do you convert the other way around? How do you convert an integer into a string? Okay. So let's con let's create the integer. Num is now 14. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a string stream object. Okay, this is C++ again. Then, so notice what is a st string stream object? Do you, you remember we've dealt with stream objects before. Uh, C out is a stream object. C in is a stream object. If you remember how your insertion and extraction operators are used, right? This is the insertion operator. So what we're doing is we're putting num into the string stream ss. And then when we print, when we convert ss into a string, now remember what is ss? ss is a string stream. So in order to uh, you know, be able to send it to another output stream, we're going to change it to a string. And in fact, th think about what we put in there, right? We put the integer 14 in there, and now it comes out as a string. OK? Now, that's one way of doing it, and this has worked for a long time. But once again, if you're using C++, there is an easier way of doing this. And that is the function toString. And that'll take an integer here as num, and it'll convert it into a string. So this is kind of like this is kind of like the old way that we used to do it, and this is the new way to do it, converting an integer into a string. Okay. And 
then of course there is uh, a couple more examples. This is changing a C string into a double in this example. Uh, string to double. And of course in this case N is an old style C string. Okay, And in this last example here we're changing a C++ string into a double and in this case because str to double is a um, C function we're going to have to change nn um, into a C string using C underscore str.